Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in Vancouver, welcome in Canada, welcome at the Future Technologies Conference 2018. And next to me we have Ram Subramanian. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, Ram works for Cisco Systems and um, yeah, he submitted a paper on the multi-user application of a mobile communication technology called Millimeter Weave. Ram, good to have you. Thank you. Yeah. What is your professional history and what are you currently working on? Yeah, so uh, I, I completed my master's uh, in computer science and automation from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Uh, that was when I had the, my first taste for research. I, I worked on a real world problem and uh, I realized that I enjoyed uh, working on problems which involve a blend of theory and practice. And then I went on to pursue my doctoral studies in Northeastern and I majored in wireless communication. Mm. I worked on topics like software radio and uh, millimeter wave communication. Yeah. So that brings me here. Uh, currently I'm working with Cisco um, and uh, yeah, it, uh, I'm happy that they are supporting me on Perfect. this endeavor. Yeah. Hey, what is millimeter wave? wave? Um, so, it, so it, is, it refers to the band. Uh, of uh, radio frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum, hmm. uh, ranging from 30 gigahertz all the way to 300 gigahertz. Now, the radio waves in this band have wavelengths ranging from one millimeter to 10 millimeters. Hmm. So that, as the name suggests, it's millimeter wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what technology is required to make use of millimeter wave? Um, so, unlike the traditional wireless communication that almost all of the traditional wireless communication that we are familiar with, like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, cellular, operate under 6 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. Now, millimeter wave, we are talking about 30 gigahertz and above. So, uh, we know that if you go to higher frequencies, the propagation is poor. Mm -hmm. So, what happens is, um, millimeter wave transmissions suffer from uh, high path loss and are very susceptible to blockage. So to increase the range, what we now have to now do is use three-dimensional three directional antennas so that you um, channel all the radiation energy in one direction. Yeah. So it's like, think of it like a torch. You know? So we need to use uh, technologies which enable this and uh, these are called phased array antennas. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so, so that is one part of the technology and then uh, uh, because we operate at such high frequencies, like an order of magnitude compared to traditional wireless communication, 6 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz. Now you have to sample at the sample these uh, radio waves that impinge on the antenna at uh, 10 times the rate. So mm -hmm. you have to deal with uh, pr uh, processing these samples uh, at a very fast rate. Yeah. So there. The, uh, the circuits community have come up with a lot of uh, these millimeter wave uh, chipsets, uh, which does this processing for us. So, yeah. so there is a lot of work there. Okay. But what is lacking is a uh, full-fledged millimeter wave communication system. Though there are, um, you know, like Wi-Fi 802.11.80 standard uh, Wi-Fi products out there, but uh, it's still in the works, I would say. Yeah. Hey. Um, looking at your paper, next question comes up. What is the research allocation scheme for multi-user millimeter wave communication yeah. or MAC protocol you describe in your paper and how does that work? Yeah, so um, I'm uh, thinking of a scenario uh, in an urban setting where you have uh, vehicles on the road and uh, they have this uh, millimeter wave uh, radio infrastructure on them and yeah. they're all trying to gain access to a uh, a base station, uh, a, an antenna that's mounted on, say, a lamp post or an infrastructure like a building, yeah. and uh, we know that the resource at the base station is limited. If you think of it as a time frequency resource, um, like a rectangle, let's say. Now, um, these vehicles on the road request for some piece of that rectangle. Now, uh, I mean, in the time frequency sense. Yeah. Um, so. How do you allocate these uh, smaller rectangles in this bigger rectangular space, yeah. right? Yeah. So it, ki it kind of translates to optimization problem and that's where it leads to. Now I put constraints based on the environment, the, uh, the constraints that lead from the communication 
the distance and all that uh, their data needs and then it all translates to an optimization problem. Yeah, That's yeah. the resource allocation scheme. Hey, hey, what are other applications of the resource allocation scheme for multi-user millimeter wave communication do you envision in the future? Yeah, so um, I think, uh, for example, you know, you are in a stadium and uh, um, you, you want to download uh, some application or, yeah. um, or, 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 you are, uh, or you want to send some high throughput data out. Now, if you're thinking of Wi-Fi or cellular, it's, we know how, how bad it can be, mm, you know? Yeah. So imagine like you have a drone that's flying past people in the stadium and it's acting like a backhaul, you know? Like, you know, it's just aggregating all the traffic and then yeah. moving to a different location and then uh, sending it into the core. Wow, network. that's interesting. Right? Yeah. So you can think of, uh, um, the mobile phones that we have as the vehicle's analogous, uh, analogous scenario here, mm. and this drone as the base station here. Yeah. So I can think of scenarios where it can apply to drone communication, even mobile, yeah. uh, but that needs significant thought uh, yeah. from this. In the future, yeah. yeah. Final question. Yep. To what extent is standardization required to implement millimeter weave at a large scale? Yeah, so... Um, as of now, I, what I'm seeing is there is not much of a consensus between uh, automakers and the standard bodies, mm -hmm. at least in, in the context of regular networks. Um, yes, so there is there is a lot of need for standardization. Uh, yeah. uh, so what, uh, something that is lacking is uh, mm -hmm. the uh, models for the communication channel in a vehicular mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, the studies that have been done so far, the channel measurements, uh, those use uh, like horn antennas which require mechanical steering and uh, they have fixed beam width. Uh, we need a uh, lot of data for this channel modeling, uh, you know, uh, with um, phased array antennas. Mm. And uh, yeah, so I think with more um, work in that across many frequency bands in the millimeter wave, uh, that, that, that will greatly uh, push this uh, domain forward. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank We're you. We're going to follow you, yes. Ram. Yes. Uh, good luck with, the, with this job. And thank you, um, thank you for uh, watching this video. When you want to see more information on these sort of topics, go to the Future Technologies website and you will find lots of other videos. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you.